So, in closing now, I am very uh, pleased and honoured to welcome uh, the Honorary Dennis Kwok to the stage. As we are here in Hong Kong, um, we've heard a lot about the global uh, activities that are going on. We also heard a lot about the data and how that, uh, and where Hong Kong fits uh, on the Global Slavery Index. So I'm really honoured to have Dennis to, up here to tell us about Hong Kong's actions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for Reuters for organizing this. You know, um, in the earlier panel, I love Helen's optimism that the human trafficking bill will pass into law in Hong Kong. I love that. I, I, really, hope, um, I really hope Helen's um, uh, optimism will turn into reality. You know, as Achana said earlier, when you try to work on these issues in Asia, it's very hard. You know, a couple of years ago when I started to talk about human trafficking issues, tr starting to speak to different audiences, uh, NGO, government officials, businesses, lawyers, um, it is hard to get through because people don't seem to think, especially people in Hong Kong, they don't seem to think how human trafficking and modern slavery issues have anything to do with us. Certainly, it doesn't happen in Hong Kong. but. Um, now that I'm pleased to say, a couple of years down the line, thanks to conferences like these, thanks to the good work of Liberty Asia and Mekong Club in talking about this issue and raising awareness, people are beginning to realize that there is a lot Hong Kong can do and must do to tackle human trafficking and modern slavery issues. And especially government attitude, I've detected a, a sense of change. Because a year ago, I spoke to the Secretary for Security and the Chief Secretary uh, about human trafficking. They would say, nah, it's, not, it's not really our thing. Hong Kong don't need to do anything about it. But, you know, thanks to the U.S. State Department, uh, uh, the TIPS report, this is politically incorrect, but I'll say it anyway, for really pushing Hong Kong government by naming them in Tier 2. And uh, the UN recently uh, said in Geneva, that Hong Kong needs a comprehensive legislation to tackle human trafficking. So as a lawmaker, uh, this is the, the natural thing for me to do, and uh, something that I see as part of my duty, representing the legal profession, that lawyers have to care about this issue. So I've uh, drafted a um, private member's bill, uh, which I have tabled in the Legislative Council. It is based on the UK Modern Slavery Act 2015, uh, with um, uh, changes that would suit the local um, uh, environment, but essentially my comprehensive legislation would um, criminalize all forms of human trafficking and modern slavery, including forced labor, slavery, forced marriage, all forms of uh, sexual ex exploitation and child labor. Now, um, that bill also will have supply chains um, reporting obligations imposed on large corporations in Hong Kong, and also we call for the setting up of an anti-slavery commissioner in Hong Kong. So all the basic building blocks of um, what you would expect Hong Kong to do will be in my uh, legislation. Now, I've tabled it. We have gone through the process of going through the security panel because the, the legislative process is, as you can imagine, a very long one. Um, but when I presented it, uh, three months ago in the security panel, there was a lot of ignorance, especially amongst the politicians. Surprise, surprise. So um, my colleagues, uh, especially my colleagues from the business sectors, saw this as a big, another regulatory compliance cost. They saw it as something that has nothing to do with Hong Kong. And they were towing the government line, saying that we already have bits and pieces of legislation in Hong Kong that the police and the immigration and the customs, they are sufficiently aware of uh, this issue, so don't worry about it. We've got the situation under control. Of course, we're not gonna stop there. Uh, the thing about being a lawmaker is that you can keep going on with uh, private members' bill until they have to respond. So after summer, um, we will uh, then send the draft bill uh, to uh, the government for a formal endorsement. Now, um, the process is that if you don't have the government's support, it would be very difficult politically and legally to have the bill pass. But we're not gonna uh, take no for an answer because this is something that has to be done. We 
have to push Hong Kong uh, on this trend because it is an international trend, as you can see in the room today, that we are very much behind in this space. So um, the government will have to give a formal response to my bill and it will create a focal point. And um, the good thing about having a bill on the table is that it puts pressure on the government and also it raises awareness. And it creates a talking point so that all of you who are from outside of Hong Kong know that we are part of the uh, fight against human trafficking, that there are some people here that cares about the issue and something is being done. So that the international community would know that Hong Kong is part of this movement. It is very important because human trafficking and modern slavery does happen in Hong Kong on a domestic level. We've heard uh, court judgments. Uh, there's recently a court of appeal case called the SEDEN, which uh, formally endorses that uh, the government has a duty to investigate into suspected uh, cases of human trafficking. And, um, but there are stories coming through the, the media. There are abuses and uh, stories of uh, uh, forced labor in Hong Kong that come through, that are slowly catching on to the attention of the Hong Kong community. But it is very important as businesses to understand that as the International Financial Center, there is so much we can do. There are 150 billion US dollars of illicit proceeds generated as a result of human trafficking and modern slavery. A lot of that will come through Hong Kong using our financial system. Someone can use a Hong Kong company based in Hong Kong and use a Hong Kong bank account to operate and control a human trafficking or modern slavery business somewhere in the region. If we don't pluck that hole, then we are directly complicit in allowing that crime to happen. So we need to change our anti-money laundering uh, legislation, which is also part of our bill, to uh, up the standards on AML so that we don't allow people, criminals, to use Hong Kong bank accounts to channel illicit proceeds. Um, international pressure is very important. Um, we're gonna work with the Financial Action Task Force, which is the uh, worldwide organization in charge of making sure governments and jurisdictions have sufficient AML rules in place to tackle human trafficking and modern slavery related proceeds. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm here to really urge you into action because you've heard a lot and learned a lot about modern slavery and human trafficking today. So you may be asking, what can I do? I run a business or I work in the bank or uh, I work in a financial institution. There are many things you can do. Sustainable investing is about making sure that the, the companies that you invest in would have policy, responsible policy statements that make sure that they don't uh, uh, have uh, human trafficking or more than slavery elements in their supply chains. Are you looking into that kind of area when you make your next investment decision or when your bank that you work for make that investment decision or the private equity fund that you work for will make that kind of decision. Or if you are a uh, um, uh, board of director uh, for a listed company, there is a, uh, a requirement in the Hong Kong uh, exchange listing rules requiring company to look into sustainability and that includes human trafficking. Now right now that requirement is very, very thin. Um, most listed companies don't really care or pay attention to that requirement, but we should. And I'm going to work with the Stock Exchange and the Securities and Futures Commission to expand that requirement in the listing rule so that companies, listed companies here, will have to start paying attention to things like the supply chains to make sure that the uh, supply chains don't have human trafficking or uh, more than slavery elements in them. So there are many things that we can do. And uh, what we must um, focus the attention on is to push through this idea that Hong Kong really has nothing to do with it. But in fact, Hong Kong has everything to do with human trafficking and modern slavery. What we do here will often have a domestic, regional, and international impact. So we'll continue on with that bill. But uh, people always ask me when I'm talking about bill, so when is it going to be passed? Um, and I tell them, look, William Wilberforce started um, <laughs> pushing for the abolition of slavery in 1780. The bill to abolish slavery didn't get passed until 1833. So it took him more than 50 years to pass that bill. Now, I'm not working along the same timeline. Um, I, I'm expecting a much shorter process um, because I believe if we keep up the pressure, if we keep talking about it, if we keep having conferences like these, if businesses care, if people start writing to their legislators and their government officials that 
there needs to be something to be done in that space, then it will take much less than 50 years to have uh, the human trafficking bill passed in Hong Kong. On that note, I thank you Reuters for organizing a great conference and thank you very much for participating.